Mendel's experiment. We all know that George Mendel was the father of genetics. He did a lot of experiments in inheritance of characteristics. He did a lot of hybridization experiments in genetics. That's the reason why he is known, well known as the father of genetics. And he studied the inheritance of traits. Traits mean characters. He wants to know how characters are transferred from father, mother to the offspring. And he wants to know how characters are transmitted from one generation to next generation. So for example, your grandfather is there and grandmother is there. Similarly, so these your father's grandfather and grandmother. Similarly, your mother's grandfather and grandmother. And that is offspring. So this particular offspring or child, it has the characteristics from father, characteristics from mother. Similarly, this child will also have characteristics from grandfather, grandmother. And here, from this grandfather and this grandmother. So how this character is there in this particular child? So this particular child has the characteristics from all these generations. So this is one generation this is another generation and even the child can get the characteristics from great grandfather which is the fourth generations so all these generations the characters are transferred from one generation to next generation by a factors called genes genes are the factors which are responsible for transmission of characteristics from one generation to next generation and this inheritance of characteristics was studied by George Mendel. For his experiment, he has used a garden pea plant that is called Pisum sativum. Pisum sativum for his experiment. And he, he explained the inheritance of characteristics are through heritable elements. And later it was discovered as genes are the factors which are responsible for transmission of characteristics from one generation to next generation. And the genes are the factors which are responsible for characteristics. It can express in different versions that is called alleles. For example, capital T and small t. So this capital T, it refers to tall. And this small t, it refers to dwarf characteristics, short. So here this is called as an allele. Always the genes can be expressed in alleles. And similarly the genes can be dominant or recessive genes. The character that is expressed in a particular generation is called as a dominant characteristics. A very simple example, your father is having some character and your mother is having some characters. Father is having some character, mother is having some character. An example, let us take example as a hair, as a character. So here, your father hair is straight. And your mother hair is curly in nature. So here, this is one character, hair as a character. One person is having straighter, one is having the curly hair. So what will happen in the generation? The child, the child will always have the curly hair. So why the child have the curly hair? Because this character is a dominant character. So dominant character only expressed in an organism. Like that, in the generation, the father, it has many characteristics. Mother has many characteristics. So two options are there for the child. The characters which are dominant, it will be expressed. The character recessive character will not get expressed so here the character which is expressed is called as a dominant character the character which is not expressed is called as a recessive character and one important thing you want to understand here a dominant character need not be dominant in next generation a recessive character need not be recessive in one particular generation it might become a dominant character also sometimes even recessive character can also be expressed in generations so that is what he has studied 
in his inheritance of characteristics. For his experiment, he did, he has taken uh, this particular plant that is called Pisum sativum, a garden pea plant for his experiment. In that, he has observed seven pair of contrasting characteristics. seven pairs of contrasting characters he has observed in the pea plant and this pea plant there is a reason behind that for his selection. So, he has selected this Pisum sativum plant for his experiment for four important reasons. One is it is a true breeding plant. So, what is this true breeding? True breeding means the offspring what we will get from generation will have the same characteristic generation after generations. That is the reason why I selected Pisum sativum. For example, the Pisum sativum produces purple color flower. The purple color flower it will be there in all generation it produces only purple color flower. That is why it is called true breeding plant or it will be having a round seed. The round seed it will be there in that particular variety of Pisum sativum the round seed it will be there in all the generations. That is why it is called as true breeding plant. So, that is the reason why I selected Pisum sativum. The next reason is it shows variety of contrasting traits, contrasting characteristics. So, they show seven pairs of contrasting characteristics. So, this Pisum sativum plant itself it exists in seven different contrasting characteristics. Purple, purple flower, white flower like that it will be contrasting seven pairs of contrasting characters were there that is the reason why he selected this particular plant for his experiment. The other thing is it is a self pollinated flower that means the flower it the anther and pollen grains the anther it has pollen grains that pollen grains it will germinate only or fertilize only the flowers or the gynoecium of the same plant. So, here what will happen here, the anther is there, the anther produces the pollen grain, it has to be transferred to the gynoecium. So, here this transfer takes place within the same flower, that is why it is that, that is called a self pollination. If it takes place between some other flowers, it is called cross pollination. So, this particular pea plant the flower is protected so that what will happen the foreign pollen grains that is the pollen grains from another flower will not fertilize it. So, always the self pollination it will be there and because of self pollination the it the cross pollination or hybrid characteristics or characteristics from some other plant will not exist here that is the reason why he has selected uh, this particular Pisum sativum for his experiment. Another thing is it grows quickly and does not require much space. So, within a short span of time you can see many generations here. So, within a year you can see two or three generations. That is the reason why I selected. One reason is two breeding, the other one is variety of contrasting characters are there. Next is they are self pollinating flowers and fourth one is they grow quickly and produces uh, the flowers a generation in much smaller space. The contrasting characteristics are as I mentioned there are seven pairs of contrasting characters are there. What are the characteristics here? Seed. The seed, there are two forms are there. One is the round, other one is wrinkled. Cotyledon, yellow, green. Flower, white, violet or purple. Pod, the seed pod, it will be full or constricted color of the pod, it will be green or yellow. Stem, axial stem or terminal stem, axial means it will be on the tip, terminal means it will be on the head. So, this is the stem and size tall, short or dwarf. These are the seven pairs of contrasting characteristics what he has observed in Pisum sativum. This is one of the reason why he has selected Pisum sativum for his experiment.